Welcome back to the IFX Expo. I'm Natalie MacDonald and you're joining us on Dukascopy TV in coordination with FX Street and Forex Peace Army. Joining me in the booth now is Lars Christensen, CEO of Sexy Bank. Lars, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Now today we are in Asia, both a technological and financial hub really, home to two of the BRICS nations and also half of the world's population. As Asia really continues to outpace Europe, how important is this market to you and how do you seek to differentiate here? I would say that uh, we're probably one of the, the, the companies that are here today, of the bigger companies that do less business in the APEC region. We have uh, around about 19% of our of our volumes, uh, our earnings rather, coming from, from, the, from Asia Pacific and uh, um, that uh, that is something that, that's sort of part of a, a more general view of, of spreading our, our, our activities very widely. You know, we, we have a, a lot of business in other parts of the world. Of course, we want to do more business everywhere, but, but I don't think we have quite as, as uh, unilateral a focus as some of the, some of the competitors have in, in, in this particular region. But, but of course, it's very important. There's a lot of opportunity here. There's a lot of opportunity in many other places, uh, and uh, we, we try to pursue them wherever we see them. Now, in an industry where competing solutions and tight spreads equate, hopefully, to market share, who do you fear? Who do you consider as, as your biggest competitor? You know, everyone and, and, and no one. You know, everybody seems to be doing some corner of, of what we're doing and, and uh, nobody seems to be doing exactly what we're doing as a, as a totality, if you will. Uh, we're not just FX, as, as a number of people out here very heavily focused on FX. It's very important for us, but, but we're also a multi-asset provider, which is also, in answer to your prior question, I think our, our main differentiation point that we, uh, we have our own platforms, we, uh, we, we are multi-asset uh, I think in periods uh, as, as the past year or so, where actually FX, in, in our experience, has been a little bit stagnant. You know, other areas like CFDs and futures have have taken over, and in that sense, uh, we, we focus very much on, on developing our own way uh, and have not focused so much on, on generic platforms as many others. Uh, and I think uh, that that's part of, of, of what what defines our success, at least. You know, because a lot of what we do is also white label. Uh, to, to other financial institutions and, and I think one of the main selling points there is that we are kind of a one-stop shop in, in, in that you know you might only need FX now but should you need CFDs, should you need equities, should you need futures then we can also deliver that at, uh, relatively easy once we're set up. In its quarterly report Forex Magnate suggests that MT4 represents approximately 20% of the retail market. Now many brokers are always adding different trading platforms to this industry but who do you think insiders are really using it and who do you see as the flat plat FX platform growing the most? Well, there's no doubt that, that MT4 has, has created a fantastic uh, position for, for that platform. Uh, uh, we have not been that much involved in that space. We, we do offer it in, in, in a limited form, uh, but, but again, as I said before, we, we focus very much on our own development because it, it's, a, it's a different thing we sell, you know, the multi-asset aspect cannot be adequately covered by any of the generic platforms out there, at least not, not currently in our view. So uh, I think that there's a platform for, for whatever, whatever need and desire you have. You know, if you have a, a simple, simple requirement, such as trading some main currencies and a few indices, uh, you need a buy and a sell button, you need simplicity. I think uh, MT4 and many others offer that. If you want the Compl more complex platform with broader asset class. I think we have around about 30,000 instruments on our platform, and that are, are sometimes get met with uh, with the answer, well, that's very complicated and very complex. So it's not everybody that sees it as a fantastic thing. So I think it it depends who you are and, and, and what your target groups are. I think in general, we probably have somewhat bigger uh, retail clients also compared to most of the competition. Our average retail account is in the $60,000, $70,000 range. Uh, and then we, we, we're sort of increasingly making inroads into the small institutional space, you know, uh, 
hedge funds and, and money managers uh, in the, let's say, zero to 100 million bracket. So that's what we're looking for and what we're trying to, what we're trying to meet the requirements of and, and other platforms meet other requirements and I guess that's capitalism, right? Ending then on clients, how do you go about still attaining your traffic clients? What challenges are there? Do you think that the trader profile is, is changing and if so, how are you both attaining and retaining these traders? I think the low end, and that's also why we're not terribly uh, involved in it, is getting very, very crowded. I mean, just, just being here, seeing infinite numbers of companies uh, that, that I'd say mostly appeal to, to the lower segments of, of, of the retail public, uh, or the binary shops and all that, uh, that, that that's not really for us. And, and uh, we, they're probably sharper and more nimble at picking up those clients than, than we are. We have a higher client acquisition cost and, and hence we need to have bigger and, and, uh, and, and more substantial clients coming in. So uh, I think competition is, is very hard in the low segments. Interestingly, I think competition is not that hard when you when you go into the more let's say the smaller institutional space because there's a clear trend at the moment that the really big boys the, the big investment banks they don't really want clients uh, before they hit at least a 50 million dollar level and up and that leaves an interesting space there for people like us that are delighted to have a, a 20 or 30 million dollar hedge fund uh, because we can handle that in a much more efficient way, perhaps because of our, our retail, our retail pedigree. You say, you know, we're, we're used to handling people with, with some degree of cost efficiency. So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm actually very optimistic about building that somewhat higher segment, because I think uh, that's where our strength really stands out, and, and that's where, funnily enough, there's less competition for these very attractive customers than perhaps for, in my view, less attractive sort of thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollar customers where competition is fierce. Lars, thank you so much. A real pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Lars Christensen there, CEO of Saxo Bank. Don't go away. We'll be back with plenty more from industry leaders here at the IFX Expo Asia in coordination with FX Street and Forex Peace Army. Goodbye for now.